And out of Iraq today, sooner U senior U.S. officials now say the Obama administration is directly arming Kurdish security forces in Iraq, according to the Associated Press. Earlier this morning, Senator John McCain tweeted about this and said, if true, it's an important and necessary step. Officials won't say which U.S. agency is arming the Kurdish forces, but the Obama administration is supplying fighters with weapons to combat Islamic militants in the northern part of Iraq. The State Department says arming these Kurds is crucial in the fight against ISIS. The Al-Qaeda-inspired extremists have obtained heavy weaponry, some of which is American-made, since taking control of territories throughout Iraq and Syria. Also, U.S. Secretary of Defense Chuck Hagel says the Islamic State is a threat to the entire civilized world. This during a news conference from Sydney, Australia today. The president has also uh, made it clear we're going to continue to uh, support uh, the Iraqi security forces uh, in, uh, in every way that uh, uh, we can. Well, the United States is currently conducting targeted airstrikes against ISIS militants in Iraq. Meanwhile, President Obama says these bombings may turn out to be a prolonged campaign. Iraq's president approved the Shias coalition's nominee for prime minister earlier today. This according to the Wall Street Journal and Yahoo News. But Iraq's prime minister, Nouri al-Maliki, refuses to step down and says the newly elected Kurdish president is violating the Constitution. Many blame al-Maliki for much of the sectarian crisis unfolding in Iraq right now. Recently, critics have asked al-Maliki to resign in hopes of choosing a less polarizing figure as prime minister. However, the Shia Muslim leader says he plans to take Iraq's new president to court for missing the deadline to nominate a prime minister. This says al-Maliki tries desperately to keep his job. In Ferguson, Missouri, a deadly police shooting for an unarmed black man turns into mayhem. Take a look at this video. It shows people looting stores, smashing car windows, and confronting police in riot gear. The violence started after a candlelight vigil for the 18-year-old victim. Police say he was shot multiple times after a scuffle with an officer and another person. The policeman who shot Brown is on paid administrative leave. The incident continues to spark outrage in the predominantly black town of 21,000 people. The local chapter of the NAACP is now investigating the case and has asked the FBI for its help. Well, Miranda, a lot of NASCAR fans are wondering what the future might hold for Tony Stewart as the investigation into Saturday's dirt track racetrack accident, which killed driver Kevin Ward Jr., continues. Witnesses say NASCAR champion Tony Stewart bumped Ward out of position, causing Ward's car to spin out of control and hit the side of the track. Ward then jumped out of his own car and walked into traffic during the race. He was then struck by Stewart's car and killed. The crash is being treated as an accident. No criminal charges have been filed. However, Ward is known for his racetrack antics, including throwing a helmet during a Sprint Cup race in 2012. <laughs> If the president or if Senator Reid or anyone else tries to tell you that our borders are secure, they are lying to you because that was just about the easiest thing I ever did. And it may be difficult to get all the way from South America to that point, but crossing that river, no problem. Well, maybe Harry Reid was wrong. That was James O'Keefe right there, Project Veritas, demonstrating just how easy it is to cross the U.S. border. It's our top story this, this hour. The investigation took place in Hudspeth County, Texas, at a crossing commonly used by illegal immigrants and drug smugglers. In less than one minute, O'Keefe crossed that river, which is only two to three feet deep and 20 feet wide in that area. J.D.?